I'm going to hand over to James and he's just going to introduce the speakers. And I just thank you for all being here. So I'll hand you over to James. Yeah, the last film that we had in the last meeting a couple of days ago, where everybody had a shot and uh, they just told us, they gave us a review of where they are, what they're doing and uh, so on. So uh, that worked very well and it was a much quicker, slicker meeting and the recording is easier to replay back and quicker too. So that's the way I'm going to play it tonight. So each person, all of us will get a shot, 15 minute slot. So if you'd like to go first, Lindsay, uh, and tell us uh, what's going on in your world. Okay, yes. Uh, <clears throat> welcome, everybody. Um, well, we, well, my wife and I tend to uh, devote most of our time now. I'm um, fortunate enough that I, I would say I'm semi-retired um, from the care homes and care businesses that we've got. Um, so we are, we are, you know, we are able to do, to devote much more time than we, to the charities we do. Uh, I'm a trustee for the Noah's Act Children's Hospital in Wales. It was the first children's hospital. 22 years I've been there now. And uh, I get great joy in uh, hearing the stories about the life saving that goes on there. Um, <clears throat> we constantly need to raise 1.2 million a year. And in that we do, um, we supply equipment that the NHS wouldn't necessarily or won't supply rather, because they either two things, they, they either buy a, a lesser version of the equipment or they will they will just can't afford it. They don't see it as their their um you know as necessary if you like. But that's the difference we, we do on as as a trustee. Uh, once a month we get to meet and decide, uh, which is a great thing, where the 1.2 million a year gets spent. And uh, um, you know, we get some wonderful stories from the equipment that we bought in the past. Um, this week we did something a bit different. We were manning a stand in in Asda's for Cerebral Palsy Company, which is an, another great um, charity that we're involved with. And as you would as you would imagine, it's for uh, it's a therapy centre for children with cerebral palsy, and they have an early years campaign at this moment, so they they're getting children as young as possible, um, even babies in who are not developing quite quick enough to see whether there's cerebral palsy involved there. Um, cerebral palsy is the biggest disability group in the world. Not many people would know that, but it okay. is. There's no cure for it. Um, you have to manage it. So we've done that this week um, and that, that was very really enjoyable. I'm hoping to get involved with um, and not just the UN equality, um, one of the late one of the uh, ambassadors posted. And it's just about equality for ladies, uh, for women. And um, it was interesting because I thought, oh, OK, I can't get really involved in that. But it's something I've been involved with personally in my businesses for many years. Um, and I remember um, when I was in legal in general, before I went into business myself, uh, going to a meeting in, in Reading and there was 140 managers and one, one lady manager. <laughs> I thought this can't be right. <laughs> um, and I part of the business was I started employing ladies, and the, my boss said to me, "Why are you, you know, why are you bringing ladies into 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 the business?" He said, "Do you know they get pregnant and they leave and have babies?" <laughs> I, mm -hmm. I thought, "My God, you know." Um, and that was in that was mm -hmm. in eighties and nineties. Um, so yeah, I have, you know, our businesses now we employ uh, 120 um, staff in one of them, and I would say 100 of them are ladies. It's a care business, so is that typical of the type of volumes that would be there? But our managers, our directors are, all, are ladies, uh, <clears throat> not by choice, but by abilities. Not so we're not saying that, like, well, we need to have this you know, more men, more women, more what have you. Um, it depends on whether this, um, the staff work with the individuals. So um, I'm keen to get involved with that. I did make an application online. I don't know what anybody else is in the group has. Um, not heard anything back yet, but I'd be keen to see to see how that goes. Um, and the other charity that I'm involved with, um, well as well as Plan Overseas, um, is a, a children's hospice in in Sully, in uh, right on the coast in South Wales, and it's an absolutely amazing place. Uh, it's been going over 20 odd years now. It needs five and a half million pounds a year to run. And um, Welsh government give us something like 
So all the rest is raised through um, charitable donations. Problem we've got at the moment is it goes up every year, as you can imagine, costs. Well, the electricity bill has gone up something like it was 150,000 to 800,000 pound a year. Um, so we're doing a bit of political lobbying to say, well, to Welsh government, you should be paying more. Um, it's, you know, it's, you can't imagine anybody needing more care than a child that's life limited. Um, but also because they care through the night 24 seven, the electricity, the, the methods to keep them uh, alive, the apparatus, the breathing and everything is all hard, hard, hard paid for by the parents. Um, so we're trying to get um, as much political push behind that. So that, that's, that's basically what we're involved in um, at this particular moment, yeah. That's, that's uh, quite, a, quite a handful. <laughs> Thank you, James. Absolutely brilliant. I didn't realise that you're in the same industry that I uh, retired from. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 13, 13 yeah. adult homes so far uh, at this moment. Yeah. And they're, for, they're for adults with uh, learning difficulties, behaviour problems and uh, um, special needs. So the typical <clears throat> houses with three or four children in them, it's not the multi, multi-occupancy, multi-beds. No, no. Uh, well, they yeah, won't register special. them above six, will they? Yeah. yeah they won't register them above six in the UK. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's getting, i got to say, I left at the right time. I mean, we had children's homes we, we had up until four years ago, which I started, and they were for children who were deemed unsuitable for fostering or adoption, either by neglect, abuse, trauma, safety, safety uh, issues or safety orders. Um, but I was so stressed, that's why we had two strokes, yeah. <laughs> so I, I can't cope with that anymore, so I sold them off. Private businesses, they are they're running very, very successfully, and we're very proud of what we were achieving there and getting each kids back into foster placements or adoption places, you know, so. Well, I'd like to talk to you another time about uh, what, we're, what we can uh, do together. Yeah. yeah the meantime, um, can we go over to uh, Addy? Are you there, Addy? Can you hear us? Addy Gum? Okay, hi. Do you want to come in and tell us now? It's your spot now. We've got a 15 minute shot to tell us what you're about. Okay, uh, thank you so much, uh, the entire team. Uh, I'm, so, I'm so honored to be given the opportunity to be part of this conversation tonight. And uh, it gives me so much joy that uh, the team are meeting which uh, is a kind of uh, encouragement to, for me as a person. Um, for, for us in, uh, in Africa and uh, Nigeria as a, as, a, as a place of my, of, of my passion, uh, our, major, our major focus is uh, how we can reinvent what, uh, humanity, what humanity is all about. Beyond just uh, beyond just words and uh, and uh, and just uh, talking about it, like people uh, in the NHS now, our own passion is how can we empower people across board to see that uh, they achieve a better life, irrespective of their location and their communities. Now, for all for us in Nigeria, uh, for GGA in Nigeria, we have as of today we have over 124 members in the on board, and out of that 124 members, 30 percent of the members on board they are having their own non-governmental organization whereby they diversify into a lot of things. However. Our major focus in uh, in Africa and majorly in Nigeria is how can we increase the number of children that are accessing education in Nigeria? How can we become a a a, a pace setter in terms of uh, an example of what true humanity is all about? I'm so happy to see what James is doing, what uh, Lindsay is doing, but for us, we are trying to rewrite the story of what kindness is all about. Now, for, for and, and one of the things that we have done perfectly fine is sending more children that are underprivileged 
to access education. Giving more children and family communities the opportunity to have access to fundamental quality health care. Health care is a major challenge in Africa. And in Nigeria, where we operate from, uh, it's a bigger issue for us. For example, uh, what's actually drive our action is based on the experience that we have had in the time past. For me, growing up has been very tough, has been, was very, very challenging. I'll just bring in a, 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 a story before I continue my communication. When I, was, when I was 18 years old, I went to go and work in uh, an hospital settings. And when I was working in the hospital, a woman brought uh, a child to the hospital. And I was the one that because I, I studied a lot of things that has to do with medicals and health cares. I was the one that carried out the uh, blood percentage in the boy's body. The boy was four years then. And when I checked the, blood, the, the percentage of blood serum in the boy's body it was just 6% as against 22%, right? Now, and I went to go and tell the doctor that I, I took the capillary to that doctor, this boy need blood transfusion. And I was asked to go and call the mom and the doctor told the mom, mom, madam, please, you need to go and look for less than 20 pence for us to do the blood transfusion. The woman went for over three hours. By the time the woman came back, the boy is dead. The boy died because of less than 20 pence, some 22 years back. Anytime I remember these challenges that women faced in the rural community, it aggravates a call within us. And, and these are things that are propelling us to go extra mile to see that we, we bring doctors together, we bring nurses together, they volunteer for us, we don't pay them anything. The only thing we do is, is to buy drugs, to create facility for them, and they volunteer minimum sometimes in the morning, they volunteer more than 20, 20 hours per person to see that we and support them to assess quality health care. And when you look at education also, we don't just do education for people in the, in, the, uh, in, the, in the city. We go extra mile into a community whereby there is no gov government intervention for the children to assess education. And as a Nigeria, as, a, as, as GJ Nigeria, that I happen to be the chair, last year alone from our record, we have supported over 22,000 children to access education. Wow. Now, and thanks to the likes of Chrissy, Chrissy has also helped us to have imparted over 200 children with My Body is My Body program, over 200 children recorded because we believe that abuse in Africa, we are all reading about it. But we don't just want to read about it. We want to be the reason why every child has a right to a fundamental right of living a well life. And apart from that, we also do a lot of uh, water related projects, which has to do with how can we bring clean water? Now, the clean water, in, in, when I've been in the UK for a while now, for a few months now, I open my tap, I see clean water. I feel so, I see the water so precious because Many community does not have access to this water. No. And at every time I open the water tap, I always tell my kid, stop, close the tap, stop wasting the water. They were like, why are you saying that we should close the tap? I, I always tell them, this water back in Nigeria is an essential commodity. And for me, coming to this part of the world, I see life in a different way. And when I was told by Carl that I will, I will be speaking today, I feel so happy that we can challenge each other to do more within our communities, to do more 
within the environment where, where, where we live because I will just share another example that makes me feel that we can make, we can change the world together. December 24th, around 9 p.m. in the night, some two gentlemen knocked my door in Newcastle. When they knocked my door, I was like, I don't, I'm not expecting Africans visitors. Can you imagine what, what I saw? They dropped me a Christmas pack that worth over 150 pounds. Since I've been in the humanitarian field for the past 11 years, I've never seen somebody say, take me, take this gift. I've never seen. That's the first. <laughs> this, was, this, is the, this was the first time somebody is telling me that, take me, take the gift. I find it so precious because I was like, a day before Christmas. Now, it's not the, it's, 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 it's not the quantity of what they brought that matter most, but the, but, but, the, but the spirit behind it, it's what, and I believe that we all have what it takes to make this world a better place. Right. Nigeria, we are challenged. We, are, we, we have a lot of challenges In part life, but we are determined. We are determined to make sure that we make a change, we transform lives, Brilliant. and this is what we are doing daily. And I'm I'm looking at the UK team becoming an orb to encourage the rest other part of the world on what true humanity is all about. And this cannot be achieved without each and every one of us going extra mile to see that we promote the art of kindness. I was, it's not just about resources. It might just be a word of encouragement to somebody that, that changed the whole life around. When you look at our world today, we, see, we are going to see that we have a lot of people that are going to depression daily. Why? Because nobody asks of them. Why? Because they seem that nobody cares for them. Why? Because they feel lonely. Why? They feel that the world has to end. But no, I can be, my smile can be the reason why Christy has to keep moving. My 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 hello should be the reason why Carol should be should keep moving. My 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 happiness should be why James should keep moving. <laughs> that is the world is becoming so tall. Cost of living is going high, but I believe we needed ourselves more than ever before to see that we keep moving, irrespective of all what the challenges is all about. As a team in Nigeria. We go extra mile. Go. Thank that you. That's, we that's saw... very passionate, and uh, I can't tell you that's a very impressive kick-in for for you and uh, the people you represent. That's amazing. So I, yes. I've made a, a note of what you've said because there's a lot of quite inspirational, passionate uh, words in there. So thank you very much. It's absolutely uh, amazing. Yeah, and thank you so much. I'm looking forward to, to meeting you in the summertime. Yeah, looking forward to that. I'm, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Gazella if uh, you'd like to come in now. We've got 15 minutes for you. If you'd like to give us some uh, uh, of some of the background of what you're up to and uh, so we can learn from you. Thank you. Thank you, James. Thank you, everyone. And so far, gosh, so inspirational just listening to everyone and what they're doing. So I wear fervor hats. So I'll start off with my day job. I work for a global medical technology company that um, is focused on increasing access to healthcare. But there are two projects in particular that I'm leading on that I'm really passionate about. And they are working with the WHO, the World Health Organization. One is just given the statistics, 800 women die daily from preventable causes of pregnancy, which is 
comparable, and this is across the globe. So one of the things that I'm working with WHO is developing global guidance to get people to have access to preeclampsia tests so that women who are pregnant and preeclampsia is quite, quite high incidence in some countries, even in UK is higher than normal. Um, and so women die from it, babies are premature as a result of it, um, children develop different conditions as well. So having that global guidance, it means that there's more access and it's a priority for every country. The second project I'm working on with WHO is to increase the tests for newborn babies. Now, anyone who's had a baby in this country, in UK, you know the heel prick test where, you know, they do the heel prick for the baby to check to, to, check to see what kind of conditions or rare diseases they have and then there's treatment. Now, there are so many countries around the world that they do not have access to those tests. And as a basis, we want every country to be able to have access to the newborn screening test for at least two conditions that kill babies in that country. And that is something that I'm passionate about and working with WHO on. It's a long process because we're having to verify each country what needs to be done, obviously led by WHO, but at least we started the project and I'm hopeful that we will get there eventually. Another key, area I work in as Strong Town Missionaries Ministries, my church, we have a giving and charitable arm um, where we provide food for the homeless. Um, and we normally do it through um, a charity called Night Watch who go out every night to give food to the homeless. And sometimes we give other things as well. And that's something that I continue to work on. Then another area that I focus on is about mentoring and sharing my career journey. COVID, as you know, made a lot of young people um, nervous, have a, a lot of them developed mental health issues. People were unsure about where their careers were going, whether they could find jobs, whether they're in the right place. And so I focused a lot on mentoring young people, students and young professionals in particular, sharing my challenges, career journey, and at the same I'm encouraging them and motivating them to, to be able to aspire to their different careers, for them to do some voluntary work, because doing voluntary work actually enriches them, gives them that satisfaction that they are actually contributing something to society. So I'll give some examples of the forums I've spoken on. So I spoke to the International Federation of Pharmacy Students um, because obviously they have a network of 500,000. They had to do a selection of them for me to speak to. And the video of my talk was then shared with the full network of 500,000 students. I also spoke with the UK Black Pharmacy Association. Again, it's a group where they are championing racism um, in health and again, speaking with them and working with them and encouraging them. We've already had a round table on racism in pharmacy and we're looking at what we can do to change that. Um, I've presented to 300 um, young professionals ages 21 to 29, talking about their career journey. We also had some of them who wanted to set up their business. So we did um, a kind of competition where three of them presented their business ideas to me. I chose one of them who I'll be having dinner with and I'll be giving her some time to help her to set up her business. Um, again, all that's gratis. Um, anyone who contacts me on LinkedIn who is looking to help for any help or career or even just um, wanting to know how they can move up in terms of the career path, I speak to them because I wrote a book on finding your purpose in life, which shared my career journey. The reason why I went into the health sector because I developed endometriosis and I lost a kidney as a result of it. I had to go privately to be diagnosed. I was involved in a car accident and doctors told me I couldn't walk again without crutches. Through private treatment, I was able to get better and now I'm back in, in high heels again. 
And so I've shared that journey and periodically I make the book free of charge for people to be able to download it for different communities. And then the other area as well, here in Temi, it was really interesting, Temi, and probably I'd like to link up with you because I'm working with a, a, a consortium actually, um, where I had to help them to put together a project which has been submitted to DFID um, for STEM education in Nigeria. Um, and we're waiting to hear from them and our goal and I, my our mission, challenging them to pull together all the resources is to be able to reach 1 million girls in Nigeria over the next four years to get them interested in STEM, have training and have support so that they as well. So I will share that with you as well, Tammy. I'm happy to share that with you um, um, later on. And then just a couple more things. Um, I'm on, a, I'm on a board called Every Woman, which is focused on women in technology. Um, and I'm a, the judge, I'm a judge for the Technology Awards. And it's been really interesting that we focus on mm -hmm. women, women with disabilities, um, women who you know, have never had any opportunities as well. And they have really good technology ideas and really showcase them so that they can actually find funding to be able to develop. And then the final one I'll focus on is the Bria Institute. Again, I'm on the board of Bria Institute, but I do, I do not, how should I say, I donate my time to join the platform for leadership training for people across all spectres of society on sustainable development goals and how they can actually use sustainability to help them to develop their career and actually contribute to society. Bria is really focused on helping people to do work that actually makes an impact on society. And so I will end there. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm really glad to be part of the Global Goodwill Ambassadors. It's an honor to be here and as everyone else we are here to serve we're here to help people and we are here to help enrich the world and one of the things that i normally say to people when i speak to them when people are worried about life and career i said each and everyone has a gift inside of us and if we find it and we use it our lives will never be the same we don't have to compare ourselves with anyone else everyone can make a difference in any small way so thank you. Wow, that's amazing. Well done, thank you very much. That is some list of uh, activities. I just wonder what you do in the afternoons, that's all. Thank you, Gisela. Um, I wonder if Chrissy can come on in now and uh, bring us up to date. There's so much going on in your life too. Okay, can you hear me okay? Yes, we can. I can. Oh, lovely. Oh, well, I'm totally inspired by everybody. Um, you're all doing amazing things. And I, I just also feel very proud to be a part of this team because it's uh, it's uh, quite an incredible team. I think I think we've got something special here. Um, so, yeah, thanks, everybody. Um, right. Um, at the moment, I mean, I'm always working on the My Body is My Body program, but we've got a few new things. Um, we've, um, I think I told you that MBIMB has become a foundation now. And um, since then, we've got um, a new trustee who's has been amazing. She's, um, she's a barrister and a safeguarding expert. And as soon as she joined, I said to her, we need a, a safeguarding course. So um, I said, would you mind writing one? But it's got to be for the world. It can't be for the UK. Sorry. Did so you... right, I'm just saying a uh, wave into Ivana who's just managed to join oh, us. Oh, good. Hi, Ivana. Hi. <laughs> I do apologise. I don't know what was going wrong with that, whether it's my phone. I have no idea. I'm really sorry, Christy. I'm not meaning to interrupt. No problem. Nice to have you here. Um, anyway, um, this um, Antonia wrote this amazing safeguarding um, course, which we are about to launch at the end of March. I've just done 34 new videos for the course. 
um, and it covers literally everything that you would you would get in a in a proper safeguarding course that you would pay for in the UK. And we are going to be able to make this available to everybody around the world for free. So okay. I'm really excited. Okay. I'm excited about that because I, I'm working in the schools in India, Africa, and many of the countries, there's nothing. The, the teachers don't get trained. The social workers don't get trained. So this will be a good course for them um, to do. So that, that's our first exciting thing. Then, um, Gazella, may, I might need to talk to you. We've, we've got another course, uh, which I've written in conjunction with um, Dr. Tufail Muhammad, who um, what, he's the ex-president of ISCAN, which is the International Society for the Prevention of Child Abuse and Neglect. He's a pediatrician. And we've put this together because I was working in the refugee camps with the My Body is My Body program and finding out that these mothers have nothing to to go through, they, they've got no idea what they're doing. A lot of them are 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. So we've we've put this course together. It's a very, very basic, very, very simple course, but we're hoping that, again, offering it free to everybody, that it'll help mothers. And um, what I do need some help with, with Gazella is, is the inoculations and things like that, that we've got to suggest, because I know it's different everywhere. I've, I've put at, at the moment a link to the WHO website, which gives what's, what's going on, but I could probably do with a bit of advice on that. Um, the next bit of news is that we finally have got um, some ASL videos, which you might have seen on um, on the website. Um, so we've got um, two. I've got the next one coming um, this week um, from a, a wonderful lady called Wanda in the USA, who's um, she's got two deaf um, children um, who are now in their fifties. But um, they were they were premature babies that ended up with um, with being deaf, and she very kindly has offered to to do the ASL sign language for all six songs, which is fantastic because it helps us reach more children that we aren't reaching at the moment. Um, I've also got we're working in in Malawi. And I am working on the Chichiwe songs for the Malawi um, language, um, which also works for the northern end of Zambia, which is good. So we, we're getting into two more countries. Um, yeah, it's it's just busy. <laughs> um, there's people every day taking the, the MBM I, MBIMB courses, um, introduction to um, child maltreatment, there's um, people taking the course to um, learn how to teach the, the My Body is My Body program. And um, in all of that, I'm, I'm still floundering as to how to raise some money um, <laughs> because I just don't have time at the moment to, to get into the grant side of it. But um, I'm hoping to have some help soon. Um, I've put some proposals together for for the classrooms in different countries that we're working in, and it's it, it works out to be roughly hundred pounds a class to to get the teachers their lesson plans, to get a, a thirty two page booklet for each child, and to get some flyers to, for the kids to take home, which I don't think is I, I don't know what you guys think, but I don't think that's excessive um kind of money um yeah. we had um our meeting on the 17th we uh M was was in he was saying that there is funding available if you can put a case together mm -hmm. um so that might be worth liaison with him uh okay. you know so i'll send you his linkedin um, thank you thank he's you on the, he's on our team anyway yeah uh, but he was saying that there's there is funding as long as it's you know a proper project which it is then um, he can po possibly assist well you, you see I, I've, I've, we've got the benefit where we've got no overheads you know I mm. mean I run everything from here um so basically all the money that I'm wanting or raising is going to go straight into the classroom so th there, there may be a little bit used for people to be able to get to 
because as Adigan knows, a lot of these schools are not just in the city, they're in rural areas. So people need, the volunteers need to go, but it is all done by volunteers and NGOs and, and things like that. So it's not, we're not asking for, um, you know, millions to, mm. to put into the classrooms. And I, I wanted to share with you one one little thing because I, I get stories back all the time about kids that that have had the program and and what a difference it makes. Um, but um, Khada, who is Our Lady in Sudan, just texted me the other day and said she just heard from this one lady. This little girl was outside; she was playing. This man came came up to her, exposed himself, and tried to touch her. Um, well, sexually abuse her. She ran away, ran to her father, who took her to the police station. And the inspector said to her, T you know, tell me what happened. And she, she did. And he's, she's men. And I know to say no and everything. And so he says, tell me, tell me, how do you know all about this? And how do you know not to, to say no? And he, he, she said, my auntie taught me that my body is my body program. Yay. So, Brilliant. yay. And Antonia, being a barrister, was saying that it's so important that... So they weren't just going, oh, this kid's, she doesn't know, you know. It's like she knew exactly. She had capacity. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it, it, I was really, really pleased with that. And, you know, it's just that that child is saved from a lifelong time of all sorts of things that go along with child abuse and and the mental health issues and everything else that ch abused children have so it really just you know even one child at a time is amazing it's a brilliant job yeah, brilliant. Uh, thank you that's me just <laughs> and it's, well, a, it's the same as uh, Ad origin as well reference the funding um because uh Vas was quite happy, wasn't he, James, on the last meeting to listen to any projects? Yes, yeah, so I'm going to try and connect with him to, to try and understand what he actually meant. Mm. Uh, because the text that I sent to you after the meeting was something that, that implied something quite different. Right, uh, okay. So we need to maybe explore that first. I needed to be sure about it. Uh, yeah, okay. Just, just coming back to Chrissy on uh, raising money. I think because of uh, what you might call readership or uh, the amount of people you connect with worldwide now, I think it's about time you started to get uh, open up on your website and on LinkedIn about becoming a friend of MBIMB. So oh, that's a good idea. And, mm -hmm. and the same with fellows. Um, I, I pay a thousand a year to the Royal Academy uh 1500 as uh to uh the tate just so that i can be kept abreast of what's going on but also to finance new uh stuff going on in the arts which as you know that's my original background so and it works i mean i think they earn about 10 million a year just from friends so as i think it's something that you're well placed to do now uh -huh. make a fuss of it Make it a wall of fame, send them a certificate, send them privileges, see what you can do. But it ever, don't forget it's, to a, a business, it's tax deductible. I think it's, um, yeah, everything's in place. It's just, it's just a case of. Um, well, you can, you, can ask, uh, you can ask friends to sponsor this, sponsor that. You build it, you build up a, a, um, a list of people you can just email them on block you mm. know ten thousand people before long you you'll have more money than you can spend <laughs> that would be a nice nice thing <laughs> well yeah. come on let's do it thank anyway, you um, thank you james I'll, yeah I'll, I'll send you a bit more about that directly later please oh uh, that would be, be a great help in the meantime um there's such a lot of wonderful things going on uh what what um myself and carol have been working on it has been to try and uh respond to ageism in particular 
and uh, looking towards providing information, advice and guidance to the web website platform that we started called WISE, which is, stands for World Institute of Society of Elders. Uh, and that's, that's sort of started to, um, you know, get, gather momentum substantially, uh, which I'm extremely pleased about. W what we've actually done is to use target facilities like books and things that people can look at and using LinkedIn posts and uh, very soon going out on other social media of things that actually gather traction and get, get a lot of uh, interest. Now, initially we didn't get a lot of interest. We were looking if we got uh, two or 3,000 views of anything we put out. I can tell you that this morning, uh, the last 30 days, we've had 36,000 views uh, of the things that we put out that was to influence people with uh, a need to understand what's happening in the world of elders. Um, I, I can speak for myself. I, I know that uh, it's strange when somebody, I'm going down to London, and if the train's full, a young girl will stand up and say, I'd like to offer you my seat. And I, I think, blimey, what's going on? <laughs> but it, it does happen. Uh, so those things are, are working very well. Uh, uh, Carol and I are just in the middle of fi uh, finalizing the scripts for a whole series of uh, short videos, which are to advise people about uh, young, um, sorry, the uh, children of elder people about how to recognize abuse, what to do about certain things that happen in their lives when they might feel they don't know what to do to give them advice on that and so on. So those are yet to come and those will go on the, on the website. Uh, in the meantime, of course, uh, my, my original opening gambit in the, in the world of, um, of post, and, and this will interest you, Lindsay, uh, post uh, retirement. Uh, I invested an enormous amount of money in SkyTech, the innovation center, with one single invitation stop elder abuse in care homes. Uh, that was in uh, late 2014. Since then, uh, I've been working with uh, the past five years with um, a scientist psychologist who was really very keen and interesting called Harold D. Sharples, who has taken this thing apart so scientifically and has been re responding to me. And we've we actually then got a grant from the government to actually make sure that we can actually see it working. And it's called PAR. And that st stands for Predictive Abuse Ratio. And the discovery was at a certain point in a culture, in a care home, if the culture is hovering about 70%, it could actually descend to toxic, but it could also ascend to outstanding. And if you apply the culture uh, the ap application to the culture, then it will get better and better and better because it is an ecosystem. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger. So that's something that we're just about to launch now for free. It means that people can actually, I mean, at the moment with, you, you were talking, Lindsay, about your bills going up, blimey. It, it's just ridiculous. How would you ever ask somebody to start spending more money on anything? They've got to uh, an instinct to cope with what they've got. Um, very, they're very uh, suspicious about anything new, particularly any in innovation. However, we're going to be doing that, sending it out, and I might talk to you, Lindsay, if you want a shot at it. Uh, and, uh, you know, it makes such a massive difference. In fact, I've got managers who who keep saying, I hope you're not going to let, you're gonna, not going to stop doing this because I've become to depend on it. I mean, we're, managers are, are very task-based, as, as is the industry. And, and as such, even when they're on uh, leave or uh, they're just away from the office, they will get phone calls from seniors and from uh, uh, assistant managers about what to do about this, that and the other. That stops. All of a sudden, after about six or seven months of being in the ecosystem, they start to realise that they, they, they can make a difference. And it's just quite amazing. Anyway, I'm boring myself on that one. 
uh, I'll let people uh, know a bit more about it uh, in various means, uh, and I hope you, you'll bear with me. Now, if you're not in the industry yourself, and you don't have relatives in a care home, you will certainly know somebody who does. And as such, they can get help through MyGran, which is uh, accessible through the WISE portal, World Elders. And you can actually say to them, look, if you want some help, there are a group of people who can actually talk to the care home operators from a, a, a position where they completely understand and they have all the credentials to do so. And they will help both parties come together to reconcile any difficulties or misunderstandings. Because very often it's, it's something that people get very irritated about. You know, uh, certainly um, the uh, families of people in a care home, if they, if they get the slightest sniff of something going wrong, they're really up in arms and they're all over CQC, any other regulator, social services health, and they start to penalise what is a very difficult job to start with being a care home manager owner. Uh, so what we do is we advise the care home that we're aware that there's a problem uh, and we can sort of uh, act as a go-between. And, and that's working very well. Now, it's not a massive need, but uh, it's starting to escalate a little. So it tells you that there is, there is a need for it. So just be aware of that. Uh, another thing is that um, the uh, the portal available for learning is is now starting to grow, and part of the work that Carol Hart and myself are doing will be on the learning portal on the the World Elders website. Uh, so that's us really. A lot more going on, and uh, if you had a look at the last uh, post I sent out, uh, you'll see that there's a new edition uh, on the website which talks about uh, the, um, the, is the issue of how we all take uh, everybody who's in, in show business and on the telly and all that, uh, that it's all great for them but in the actual fact the reality is it isn't and they too suffer and um, we want to bring that understanding and use their kindness to expose how they dealt with dementia and how they, the family dealt with it. And it's absolutely amazing. It's really worth a read if you get time. I don't suppose anybody on this meeting is ever going to get time, but I hope you do. So that's, <laughs> a, that's me over and done with, Carol. Um, thank so you. Can I take some of that from um, and, and do an article in, in the magazine, James? I, I am going to do it. I've got it all ready to send to you. Have you? Oh, good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. I don't know if you've noticed that I have been putting something age related in every month. I have. Oh, I good. Have. <laughs> you've, not, you've not seen me applauding. <laughs> no, just, just trying to make sure that we, we cover everything, you know. Well, I'm, I'm advertising yeah. uh, what I was talking about with CQ, uh, CQE, this new, uh, the PAR uh, algorithm that, that changes cultures. Uh, in on the magazine as well so we'll be advertising that Good. and we'll Good. be talking about so we we can now start to get involved with the magazine a bit more fantastic thank you so uh, and i'll be wanting to i'll be putting stuff in maybe maybe not to ship but when i'm ready about mental health and you know um you know 40 is it every 40 seconds someone loses their life through suicide so um yeah, so I'll be looking at that sort of moving forward. Uh, I think we've still got uh, our lovely lady, haven't we? Yvonne has got to <laughs> come on now and say hello. Just before Yvonne, before you do, can I just go back to you, Chrissy, to say that our move, the little movies that we're doing on the website are going to be fronted by Gillian Rose uh, Sign Source. We've actually started to work with her. Sign Source does the ASL. Uh, so we we will be alongside with you with responding to that need. So just want to know that. Oh, that's good. Yeah, I, I think the more we can do, I mean, yeah. now I've got people saying they want it in Braille, so I'm not sure how I'm gonna gonna do that. But um, you that's know, amazing. We'll, yeah, we'll do we'll do what we can. You know, Yvonne, um, over to you. Hi. Hi. Hi, yeah, lovely. 
Hi, it's always lovely to, to catch up and to listen. I mean, Christy, what you're doing is absolutely unbelievable. Um, I'm very aware of how far you're reaching and it's fantastic. I think you've single-handedly dealt with so much awareness that children now understand that they've, they've a way to, to deal with, understand what child abuse is. And that's fantastic. So all I can say is, you know, um, I'm humbled by what you do and I think it's absolutely brilliant. When uh, as I'm still working with the Masaba children or out in Kenya, I think I mentioned this, so I've been working with them now five or six years. Um, when Beatrice first took on children coming across the border from Tanzania, uh, they were orphaned, they were war orphaned, and she took on half a dozen. And it's grown and grown, and there's 187 children there now. They don't get funded for anything. So I've been helping for a number of years. And uh, I introduced um, Chrissy's programming quite a while ago, and she's been using that. And, um, and I just quietly did it, and she just quietly uses it. Uh, but I feel it's had an impact because we don't know with some of those children, they don't speak. Um, so we don't know what, like, what they've seen. We, we know they've seen terrible things. We don't know what they are. Um, so I can only say thank you for that. I mean, for, for what I'm doing, I run, as you know, um, a care business and I'm very involved with CQC and <laughs> between the two, it's quite busy. Uh, but we've, um, I was asked last year uh, by a, a commissioner in Kent, police commissioner, about moving children because there's something called county lines. I don't know if you're aware of it. No. And it's where children have been uh, compromised and they've been sucked into people who've manipulated them to run drugs. Even there's a prostitution involved in it sometimes. It's awful. Um, and the kids then are compromised. If they say anything against uh, the drug dealers, then they put themselves and the families at risk. So there's the police have got an initiative and they want to move children from the south to the north and vice versa, but essentially give them fresh starts. So the children will be coming with a new identity and we have to help them to resettle. So we've been getting ourselves ready as a, uh, as a group and uh, we're now ready. So we've got a, um, a transport section set up to move them. Then we've got... Um, housing set up to accept them. And I've got teams now being trained because it's different sorts of training to regular mental health work. Uh, for adults, it's way different. Um, so I'm anticipating quite a number of these children having been abused. Uh, it's, I mean, you look at the statistics, it's, a, it's awful. Uh, it's one in four. Um, I know that, um, I'm trying to think who said it's one in six somebody who comes on to LinkedIn who says it's one in six, the NNEC group, um, I think their statistics are wrong. I, I do think it is one in four, which is quite as high. It's ridiculous. I don't know if we'll ever, in honesty, stamp it out because for some reason it just moves uh, from being, before we had the internet, it was bad enough. Now we've got the internet, it's really bad. So, so that's what we're doing. We're looking to start moving these children and, uh, and placing them and then working with them. And I've had something called the Freedom Hub for a while. And I work with um, a lady who was, she's a ballerina and she used to dance on uh, Legs and Co and Bands People years ago. And she's got a, her own theatrical company. She, she's very, very good. And um, throughout COVID, we put things on. So we had people singing and dancing uh, once a week, all through COVID, and, and she's just unbelievable. So, so I know there's Arts Council funding, which is what I just texted before. So Chrissy might be able to pick up on something with that. We've applied for Arts Council funding for our Freedom Hub. And as long as we are doing something arts related, um, then they'll fund it. So we're having people coming in and singing and dancing. And of course, I want to use it as a vehicle to help the children to help to, because they need to recover, if recover is what they'll ever do. Uh, but they need to get to a level where we've got as good as we can get. And then they can hopefully progress on 
and and we can discharge them from our service though people are telling me it's going to be a long obviously I've worked in this sector a long time I know the damage but I'm used to working with the damaged adult I chose years ago not to work with the damaged kids uh, but you can't ignore what's going on all the time and you've got to sort of say okay so so this is my um my pre-retirement effort oh my uh, to try to do my bit to help. So, so that's that's really um, on what we're doing. Mm. It doesn't say much, but it's took a lot of work to get to this stage. That's amazing, Yvonne. And I think I think you're right. I think the statistics, especially with the children that you're working with, are going to be a lot higher, even higher mm. than one in four. I wouldn't be surprised if it's like three in four because these yeah. kids come from difficult backgrounds, difficult homes, and mm -hmm. the, I'm sure a lot of them, the, the reasons that they're, they're in the predicament they are in is because of the abuse they've experienced as children. And they've been coerced, and they, they don't accept any of it because they love, they love their families or their dealers. Um, they're going to have to learn what that is that they've been you know subscribing into and then to develop an ability to, to recognize it for themselves so we can help to protect them as adults because the last thing anybody wants to do is to see them travel through life as continual recycling victims you know it will affect them throughout their lives so so that's like i say it doesn't sound a lot but it's took a lot of work and then of course um, I'm going for a sponsorship license at the moment because the sector, I mean, James will know, um, it's compromised, but we can't get the staff. There's 160,000 vacancies in the sector. So I've, um, the government put a scheme out to, for sponsorship last year, and we can bring people in from abroad. So we're going through that route. And, uh, and, and on, while we're doing this journey, of course, my own team, um, I've had to make some changes within my own team because of uh, work practice. So now I'm covering their jobs as well. So it's just how it is. It'll settle down again. Great work, Yvonne. Thank you. Thank you. Can I come in, please? Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Yvonne, that's amazing. It's amazing what you're, uh, what you're planning there. A um, couple of things I, I, I picked up on from my background in children's care. Um, we've had children come to South Wales to our, our care homes here from all over the country, principally moved under child safety orders. So they were removed from the family environment and uh, <clears throat> um, put in, or seemed to be coming to an area of safety where they will not be recognised and they get a fresh start. Um, and what we've experienced is it's the, um, the area <clears throat> where they originate from carry the cost burden so if you had a child coming from manchester down to south wales all costs were carried by that and also any ab child advocates and things like that who were monitoring what we were doing <clears throat> always came from the child's home uh, the eventual view was that after a certain speed of the time they would be able to go back um, but there was never a time set on that so from a funding thing, one of the things I picked up on there is that's what we negotiate with to cover the costs of anything coming down. So um, <clears throat> I'd like to speak to you more on that, if I can help you in any way, um, because so we've ex not only just child abuse that we've had children come to us for, it's neglect, trauma, uh, mm. you name it. Uh, I'm coming from different areas throughout the UK to a place of safety. Yeah. We've been asked to pick up, uh, we're registered from 14 upwards, but they've asked us to pick them up from four years. And you yeah. just think, what on earth has happened in a child's life at four years old yeah. for them to need to be on a programme like this? But yes, I would love to speak to you, Lindsay, because, um, like I say, I focus on adults and forensics uh, care throughout my working life. Uh, so to, to step into the children's side, um, I'm quite flattered and humbled that they want me to do it. Yeah. Uh, I don't doubt mm. we can do it, but I think we've got a steep learning curve, so I would love to speak to you about it. Yeah, we, you know, the, the, what we have found was that we'd come from adult 
without that a whole sort of 14 years before we went into the children's sector. We went into the children's sector at the request of social services in our areas, saying this is where the, the need, the demand was for, for, for care. Um, and the staff, you know, the choice of staff where they went to the level of, of, uh, of level five ready, um, experience and things like that, we, we had to put in place for it. But it, it was, I got to say, while it was extremely stressful to myself, seeing, as you just said there, you know, we were getting children, but from eight, from the age of eight, we were taking them. And eventually mm -hmm. then we, they said, well, can you change it from naught to 18? So I uh, said, so how can you have a four-year-old in for a 16-year-old or whatever? But they were so desperate, they just wanted to, uh, to, to do that. Um, but it was, I, what I found was, the, the trauma not for my, just for myself, because it did impact on me, uh, <clears throat> for the staff, quite a high level of staff turnover, because these kids were coming from an environment yeah. anyway, where they were totally alien to coming into, into South Wales, a child coming from Manchester, coming into South Wales, staying with three other children who got their own problems, with a fresh lot of staff, having to find them schools and things like that. It is... I'm I'm inspired by what you're you're planning, and if I can help in any way, then I I would like to get involved in that. Thank you, Lindsay. No I feel I'll certainly be using Chris's program, uh, yeah. for definite, and certainly um, anybody who can mm. advise me on what we're doing. I don't I don't want to sound like I'm going into it unaware. I'm, I am aware, um, but I feel, you know, it's like you say the emotional side of it. I pick up on. And when I, when I was, uh, years ago, I used to work with children in the hospitals and I just, I opted to work with adults because I felt it was less, mm. less stressful at that mm. time. Um, but no, I'm going to see what we can do because I just feel this needs not going to go away. And I just feel if we can make a difference for them, mm. let's try. Yeah. 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 I, might, I, might, I might need your help as well. Cause I'm going to do a project soon with um, taking children from uh, mainstream, mainstream schools who are just not being able to fit in or don't feel that they fit in or they're going down the wrong route. And so we're putting programs together uh, in terms of taking them out of mainstream schools, putting them into a 12 week program where they can do, um, do the school work, but also do like fitness, you know, learning um, stress management, boxing, that type of thing, you know, in a, a healthy way. So generating the energy back in uh, for themselves. And then obviously once the 12 week program's finished, if they still have to, if they're still not ready, then they start over again, they go back in the same program. But it's very, very early days. Yeah. Um, within that 12 week program, they'll also be, counsel you know, be a counsellor. Um, so we'll have all these people coming in and helping. Uh, it won't be uh, loads of children. It'll probably be about three, four children at a time. Mm. So they're getting the dedicated support that they need um, mm. uh, in terms of, you know, as well from uh, broken, broken families. Mm. Um, so, yeah, so I would like probably some support as well, maybe moving forward with that because... I'm the same as you. Uh, I deal with veterans with all different types of mental health, suicide, self-harm, uh, broken relationships, homelessness, um, self-esteem, confidence is at an all-time low. They've lost everything, but it's it's completely different when you, you start and look at, you have to completely look outside the box when it comes to the children as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I'm sure, you know, within this group, um I don't feel it's difficult to put a 12-week a program together because mm. many of these children will need, they're not going to fit into school. They're going to, you know, they'll be better if they're homeschooled. Yeah, yeah well, this 12-week this program has been, uh, it's been developed at the minute. So we're going to have like, the, well, the gym's already set up. So the counsellors are working with us. The gym set up, the the guy that's training them at the minute, uh, it, we're just doing the kind of the boxing and the gym work and the, the interaction and learning to trust people again and things like that. So rather than them sitting, unfortunately, 
in isolation because they've been misbehaving. So that's kind of the logic behind it. And then within that, they'll have counsellors. And then um, they want me to go in and do basically some of the education and training as well, just from my background. So, but that'll be something that I'll be doing down the line again. You know, I've got other commitments and I'm sort of going to be doing voluntary work rather than getting fully into it initially until uh, yeah. see how I can commit to it. Yeah. And I think I think James does you James, you do something as well, don't you? Oh. At the minute. I I actually do uh, I mentor young entrepreneurs in the mm. um, the care industry, uh, particularly about uh, diverse income streams, such as they, they all get this mad idea that, that they've got to keep building, buying properties, developing them and you know, trying to jam people in to, to generate a profit, but it, it's a combinational effect. And I, I've been building uh, a couple of uh, enterprises with two young entrepreneurs. There's quite a number that need the help, but two in particular local to me, uh, one in Birmingham is doing quite well. I started activity groups for, uh, like Lindsay was talking about, people with a learning disability, or, or I always call them people with learning differences, and people with autism who can learn, an activity program which is person-centred, which uses all the flipping hundreds of free resources in the city where they live. Mm -hmm. And if by harnessing, putting these things together, it's only common sense. They're finding that they can actually set up a little program for somebody where they choose what they want, they start to test it and try it and start to make friends in those areas. Like most colleges and universities all have sports facilities which have opportunities for anybody in, in any community. Uh, and it, it, it's just so easy to do. They're just not aware that they can charge social services money to do it, but mm. they can. And it's very successful. There's no nights, there's no... Um, uh, it's not a, a centre-based opportunity. <clears throat> There's no capital investment much that they can't invest themselves. So it's a win-win. Um, and those that have tried it are being successful. Slow but sure. I've told them they've got to get it right with one and then move on. D don't try and open a, a 50 unit. You're talking about a very slow build. Mm. But, I mean, for instance, um, uh, when I was actually starting working with people with LD and we started uh, Regent College, um, it, it, was all, it was all about uh, lesson-based, but that wasn't the, the, the reality. The reality was for them to learn by doing. And, and uh, it's, uh, I, can't, I can't emphasize how much we need to step away for a lot of people, step away from traditional training and education. Mm -hmm and build something around them. And once we find out what they can and want to do, boy, do they start to learn. And it's all about learning, not just about teaching. So if, if we can get them to learn on their own terms, they start to come through. And that's a success story. Anyway, once again, I'm boring myself. Uh, I, I always think um, bring back these training programs and all that. Some, want, yes. uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, because you know, that was hands-on and it, it gave people a, a diverse um, subject matter to decide what they wanted rather than being forced to be settled for what they have to take. So um, so I just want to say, um, Addy Gone, is there anything else you'd like to, to sort of highlight? It's been an absolute honour having you uh, here with us and you're more than welcome to join us anytime you want. Uh, uh, we we're gonna we we're discussing the meetings, weren't we, James? And I want to think about um what everybody else thinks with us all being so busy. Uh, we did think once a month, but maybe that might be a bit of a stretch. So, what about every two months having a meeting? Uh, what's your thoughts on that? Well, for me, for me, it's uh, really a good uh, action that the team are, are taking in the right direction. And uh, one, one good thing I would like to see is uh, actionable uh, plan 
to see what the team is uh, planning to achieve in the next uh, couple of uh, two, three months to six months. We can have the short time plan, the long time mm -hmm. plan. At the end of the day, we need to have uh, a strategic plan of what the UK team is uh, looking at uh, impacting as individual and as a team. For me, uh, I'll be supporting more, I'll be supporting the, the Nigerian team also from here. And uh, anytime, uh, anytime the, any program is coming up in UK, I will also be rightly available also to see that uh, we do more to increase the impact of the, of the team across the world. Yes. Now, I would like to say thank you as well for sending your events um, Excel sheet. So I will be uh, utilizing that. So I would appreciate that. Um, what about everybody yeah, else? What do you think in terms of every two months rather than a month at a time? Well, I would agree because everybody's really busy and um, a month can go so quickly, you know. Mm. So I would agree every two months uh, is achievable. Yeah, me too. Me yeah, too. me too. Yeah, because, uh, you know, we are a bit conscious about how busy everybody is. And, you know, and like you said, just, it just flies by, doesn't it? But I think uh, in terms of every two months, then we've got something to really, you know, there's meat on the bone there to really talk about things. And, and um, has anybody else got any other things that they want to say or? Or can I just add, I'm going to be starting some train the trainer um, sessions. Um, so if you've got anybody that's interested in learning how to talk to the kids about child abuse prevention oh. at, at all, um, I'm going to start those um, in March. And well, that would be me, Kirsty. <laughs> I would like to join. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm going to do that every two months as well, and uh, just sort of um, make sure that people know what they should be doing, how they should be doing it, how to respond, and you know, um, it's all very well them taking the the this thing online, but I think it's easier if you're actually in front of somebody and they can ask questions. So. Yeah, that that's all. But yeah. yeah, Chrissy, I'm interested in that as well. Oh, could, good. Um, could my staff come on that? Anybody? Yeah, anyone that, that wants would to be come. Fabulous. Thank you so yeah. much. Yeah. Now I'll let you know. Um, I'm going to try and do it on um on Google because my son set me up this thing on Google where I think you can have up to 500 people that no. long. Mm. So I need to figure out how to learn it. <laughs> and sort it all out and then once I suss that out I'll put I'll put the uh put the thing out and then you know you're you're not wondering how you know if if, if it's how many people you're going to have because I mean we never have 500 people but you know so you're not you're not limited so that'd be good that's fantastic yeah any more for any more anybody else got any anything else that they want to talk about just, i'll just let you know that uh, all of this has been recorded and we will uh publish it tomorrow uh but it will be uh just for uh the um, gjf uk so obviously if you want to communicate it carol to lisa or whoever then that's okay too lisa, lisa's already on the dga anyway uk team oh who is she again i said lisa's already on the dga uk oh. team I thought you'd introduce somebody new then. Oh, we have, but I've I've added um added gun anyway to to okay. our group. All right. On the, pro on the project team, yeah, yeah. Very good. Um, so I just, that, that, that's it then for me. Yeah, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone for attending. It means it makes such a difference just to be able to collaborate with each other and. Um, and just hear the wonderful things that you are all doing. And I'm just absolutely blown away by it, if I'm honest. And if there's any help we can help at all, um, please, please don't hesitate to get in touch because that's what we're here for. And we're here to support one another, to, to make uh, humanity and the world a better place. So thank you so much. Thank you, Carol, for all you do. We appreciate it. Yes, I, I echo Chrissy's words exactly. Thank you, Carol. Yeah, thanks, Carol. Yes, thank you, Carol. And also thank you to Teddy. 
<laughs> yes, Teddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That is my little, um, he's little, my, my little star. Um, I'm having to leave him uh, in the next week or so. So I'm like, oh yeah. my God, he's going to be all right. But um, he's, um, he's going to be staying with a friend and uh, who, my, one of my colleagues, who will be taking him into work and I've given strict instructions. Do not leave him with anybody. Do not take him, you know, so um, yeah. So I, I just miss him when he's not with me. Uh, and it, it's a blessing because I can, I can take him to work and he's um, really emotional with the guys and he'll sit out with them and he, he literally sits there and listens to everything and sits on the knees and when they need emotional support he's there and just yeah normally it's like can I have Teddy for a half an hour and he just gets a therapy dog Oh, he is. he is until he sees another dog, Chrissy, outside the window, and then <laughs> he's like, he's like, if you, you know the gremlins, the little, uh, the film, the gremlins, where you see this little amazing dog, and then uh, this little creature, and then as soon as he sees another dog, he thinks he's a German Shepherd, and he's like, I'll protect everyone. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. So uh, I'll um oh, for such great therapy, and we've used them and. Uh, you know, particularly when I've worked with elderly care and we've brought all mm. sorts of animals in mm. and they've loved it. I'd love to get uh, Teddy into the, you know, the care homes and stuff, but I'm not quite sure how it works <clears> now with <throat> COVID and, and whatnot. So that'll be the I next thing. I think we welcome you. Yes, yeah, and, and we've got a, a dog that's called Nico, who is due to the children's hospital. And oh, the right, he lovely. makes children pre-op, post-op. Um, oh, it's, it's amazing. They're you amazing. Won't, you, won't believe, you won't believe the difference. Child's face, and we've got some great stories. Pictures of the child being depressed and being lonely. And all of a sudden, mm. <laughs> Nick was on the bed and he's stroking him, and it's a different thing. Yeah. It has to, I think you have to have some sort of um, like a certificate to show that the dog is, you know, particularly with children. It's not aggressive or any type of sort of it's passive and things like that. So uh, that's what we had to do with the hospital anyway. Yeah. So, but yeah, can't beat it. We've just got a golden retriever now. He's seven months old. Oh, oh yeah. He's grown. He's uh, he's about three foot high now. But he's just amazing. He's our therapy dog in the house. <laughs> There's um, a group in uh, we. I used to manage uh, a number of care homes over in Yorkshire, and. Um, there's a group called Pat the Dog. All right. It doesn't just involve dogs. Uh, they used to bring everything up to donkeys, all sorts of things. <laughs> um, but they go around the care homes and they had, um, like very much um, like Lindsay's saying, I think they had to get some level of certification. But they would, they were, it might be worth Googling to see. I know they were near to Huddersfield, Leeds, that area. Mm. And they were called Pat the Dog. I'll check out. I'm trying to get him um, to book, you know, like become like an assistance dog type thing, an emotional dog. But yeah, he's gonna have to prove himself mm -hmm. through the train. And and he, he's he's just turned four, so he might be too old. So I'm I'm working on that one. <laughs> That'd be fabulous for him. Mm. Yeah, he he does love life. He loves um. He's been he's been at the veterans game now for, since he's been four months old. So he just seems to know, um, he can sense when people are unhappy or sad or, you know, and he literally bounces on, we've got a reception and he, he leaps from the chair to the, recep the reception top to um, the meet and greet and he will not settle until he says hello to everybody. And if we have a, a like a, a client meeting, he has to say hello to everybody before the meeting starts. So he's kind of the boss. <laughs> he's the boss. So the, um, so the GGAF, uh, the co-chair has got a co-chair. Yes. Teddy. Yes. And my, my boss has two uh, English bulldogs and uh, we have to separate them because Teddy's the boss. <laughs> <laughs> So it's quite, it's quite amusing, actually. Yeah, it's quite funny. It's very funny. Mm. So please, please take care of yourselves. And um, I'll, James and I'll arrange. And James, thank you again so much for letting us use your Zoom. It is yeah, much thanks, appreciated. James.
Thank you. Thank you. And lovely to see everybody again. Yes, it's been Good. super. Nice meeting. Thanks, Carol. All just, right, take just, care. Just one yeah, more quick you, one quickie. Oh, one, just one quickie. I've just Googled certified therapy dog so you can get your therapy dog certification. So if you Google it, it comes up with how to get your dog certified. As will you send therapy. that to me, please, Linda? Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah. That's brilliant. It's, Thank you. Believe it or not, it's so easy. It's therapydogs.com. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Thank I'll you. Do that. I'll put it on the notes below. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye. All right, soon. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye. Take care.